On TV, you hear the term vegetative state and coma and brain death all the time in medical shows. But what do these terms actually mean? Hey there, Brainiacs. Trace here for DNews. For non-medical people, the terms vegetative state, coma, and brain dead are used interchangeably. But they are not synonymous, and there are very important distinctions. People in a vegetative state still have a functioning brain stem, meaning their body is essentially on autopilot. They can breathe on their own, have a sleep-wake cycle, and react to some stimuli, but they can't hold a conversation or take in their environment. Neurologists define consciousness by wakefulness and awareness, and people in a vegetative state are awake but unaware. People in a coma, on the other hand, are not awake or aware. Comas can happen either if their cerebral hemispheres aren't working or if the reticular activating system, the part of the brain stem responsible for wakefulness, is damaged. Then people enter a state of deep unconsciousness, like the most hardcore nap ever taken. Still under the surface, though, their brain is at a minimum sending out some signals. It's possible to recover from a coma into a vegetative state and then regain awareness. Unfortunately, it is also possible to progress from a coma to a state where all neural activity ceases and the brain no longer has any input on the body's function. This is called brain death. Brain death does have another name in the medical community, death. Someone in a vegetative state or a coma is still considered alive, but brain death is irreversible. So doctors go through a series of tests known as the brain death examination before officially determining that person is in fact brain dead. These tests look for any brain function, even the most basic brainstem reflexes. If the patient fails them, they are considered legally dead. Sure, they can have the semblance of life thanks to life support, which in this context is kind of an ironic name, but a brain-dead person cannot live long without assistance. Pacemaker cells in a person's heart can continue to function independent of the brain for up to a week, meaning that blood can keep pumping. But the brainstem is responsible for keeping breathing going. Even when you're not thinking about it, your brain is regulating your breathing, though I guess you're probably all thinking about it now. Complete cessation of neural activity means even that basic function of operating the lungs stops. Within minutes, CO2 levels in the blood will be fatal. A person in a coma would reflexively gasp for air, but a brain-dead person would not. The brain regulates a host of other functions unconsciously too, like body temperature and blood pressure. And it is in charge of hormones that control your metabolism, immune system, and specific organs like your kidneys. Keeping a person's body going after brain death requires a ventilator, blankets, and hormones. That's a lot of outside effort to handle the most basic work of the meatball between your ears. It makes you appreciate everything that that little guy is up to. Thanks, brain. Your brain is pretty vital for that whole staying alive thing, so how much of it can you lose and still not die? Julian covers just how much of your brain is expendable here. If you have more brain to work with, losing parts of it aren't as severe because of the brain's ability to rewire itself. People have lived mostly normal lives with large bits of brain totally absent. Like a woman in China who was born without a cerebellum, the little cauliflower looking bit at the back of your brain that controls voluntary movement. What else would you like to know about the brain? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe so you get more D-News.